welcome back i'm courtney and this is the accounting struggle where we speak about our struggles with accounting openly and honestly we do not run from them and in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you five skills that you need to be successful in accounting so first before we get started um if you're new here welcome hey Okay, so these are not going to be in any particular order, but they are things that I think are very useful skills. And then looking at all the people who are super successful in accounting, they all have these skills, like, and they're highly skilled at these things. So these are the things that I'm going to be sharing with you. But if you find that there are more, definitely let me know. Leave a comment for anyone else who might be looking to go into accounting as a career. It will be helpful to them as well. So the first one is time management. So time management, to, to just be more specific about that, you will be working on a lot of different projects at once. No matter what you're doing in accounting, whether it's audit, tax, reporting, it really doesn't matter. You're going to be managing a lot of projects simultaneously and you need to have strong time management skills. So if you're still in school, just think of this as having to manage all of the different coursework for all your different courses. If you're taking like 18 credits and you have a project or an exam or some type of assignment due in all of them on the same day or in the same week, that would be accounting in the professional world like times 10. So in order to develop strong time management skills, you really need to be organized. And when I say organized, I don't necessarily mean like the Pinterest-y, like, um, pretty colorful post-its and everything's color coordinated and, like, you have all this amazing handwriting and you're, like, writing all these cute notes and stickers and planners and all that. I love that stuff. But you don't have to be that person to be organized. You just need to have systems that are very strong, that make sense to you. Um, so whatever that might look like, whether you're a OneNote person or I think there's a Keynote or Evernote or something like that, some type of system where you're keeping all of your, your work, um, all of your notes, you have your schedule, you know exactly what's coming up, you know when things are due, and you know how to be flexible, you know how to prioritize your work. So those are the things that are going to really help you with managing your time. And then to just um, take it to a more granular level, when you're working on projects, they need to have a little time budget as well. If you're working in tax or audit, these are things that will be given to you based on the, the whoever's managing the project will tell you this is 10 hours. So you'll know, okay, I can only spend 10 hours on this. Um, or that will give you more of an idea of how much time you should be spending on things. But outside of that, you should already kind of have an idea no matter what you're working on if it's just like i'm about to post this journal entry it should take me uh no more than 15 minutes to collect all the support and then post it just have a good idea of how long things will take so that you're able to effectively manage your time on every single project and before things start have a good idea of what your day is going to look like and your week but you should you should start at like month week day hours minutes you know but just break it down so that you know exactly what you're getting yourself into you never want things to be like super thrown at you because then you'll start to feel overwhelmed but of course there is a such thing as flexibility and you do have to have that as well but time management is very critical you cannot be successful in accounting without it it is a skill that you need to start working on now if you're not working in accounting yet get your practice on managing multiple um priorities at once because that will be your life communication is another really important skill that you will need so i used to always say i am um, strong in communication skills and i always thought that and i always felt that i was in all of my other roles but going into accounting i learned that there were different layers of communication skills that i really needed to um, refine so basically with communication, it, it needs to be written and oral. You need to be able to formulate clear and concise messages, whether you're emailing, writing memos, whatever it might be. And that's kind of what most people think of when they say communication. Um, as well as you need to be able to speak. You're going to often be presenting, you'll be in meetings, you'll be, people will hear you speak and it needs to be clear. and people need to be able to effective, like your communication should be effective. People should be able to easily understand what it is you're trying to say. The added layer of communication that I needed to work on that I didn't necessarily have right out of the gate was being clear in my 
how I communicate my work and having it be so clear that a third party could come in behind me, look at everything that I did and they don't have a lot of follow up questions. That's clear communication. In real life, they had a lot of questions following up like, okay, how did you get this? Or where's the support for this? So that was something that I was just learning just based on feedback, like, hey, I really need to work on this. So what that what to give you an example, if you are working on, um, let's just say a tax return or a pro let's just say a tax return, because that's the world I came from. Um, and you are you have to come up with like, some formulas or you have to come up with some sort of um, information that goes into a calculation for something that you need for a journal entry let's just say you need to be able to show the person exactly how you came up with that formula did you grab where did you get this rate from like what is that from um, all of that stuff should be clear it should be referenced like you should say oh this is from work paper so and so um, and this is gonna go the same for pretty much audit and reporting any type of role you're in you should be able to point back to where your sources are just like in school where you have to cite your sources it's the same thing people make it as easy as possible for whoever is reviewing your work they don't need to have to like if you struggled and you had to look all over the place for the answers you want that to not be the case for whoever is reviewing what you did it should be super clear they should know exactly where to find everything that went into your documents, all of your work papers, it should just be very clear um, how you came up with your everything that you did. So it's basically just gonna go back to the school days of having to show your work. You're just gonna reference everything, um, all of your support, all of your calculations, whatever website you pulled this, this rate off of or whatever, all of that information should be easily accessible to whoever will be reviewing your work. So that's the type of communication that you also need to be skilled in. It should just be very clear what you did, how you did it. And um, yeah, people just need to be able to understand that without having to come to you and say, can you show me how you did this? I'm not clear because it's always gonna be so far after you've done it that you're not gonna remember what you did. So make sure everything is heavily documented. Another note on communication is just being very mindful of your tone. Um, especially in the climate that we're in right now where everything is communication via like Skype or phone it's most of it is via some sort of text people don't have the benefit of seeing you smile they don't see your facial expressions they don't know the sarcasm in your tone they all people are left to assume so you want to be very careful in how you communicate especially when you're doing so via some sort of text um, just keep that in mind because people can't see you so things can go left really quickly so just try and keep your communication as professional as possible and don't say anything that you wouldn't feel comfortable having read out loud like to i don't know your mom or something so just that's how i think about it like okay if they were going through like a skype audit is this a message that would be pulled would they flag this okay then yeah i'm, I'm gonna just go ahead and erase that um so just definitely be thinking about that when you're thinking about communication as well. So this one is more of a soft skill, but it is very, very important, especially in really in all professions, but particularly in accounting. I find that this is something that's very useful and that is relationship building. A lot of people think that accountants are super weird and I wouldn't argue that that is far from true, but you can't just like go to your cubicle, work there, never talk to anyone. Um, and just be completely isolated. If that's what you are kind of thinking your life or your career will be like, I think that you will find you'll have a little bit of trouble in advancing in your career. If you don't, if you're not able to build strong relationships, working relationships with individuals in your profession and outside of your profession, you will hit a few walls. So relationship building is pretty important, especially if you are working in a setting where you, or in a field where you will be responsible for getting, eventually bringing in your own business or bringing in your own clients. So for example, public accounting, if you're looking to move up as a manager or as a partner, you will eventually be responsible for building your own book of business. And relationship building is one of the key ways to do that. It's not strictly about sales. It's more about 
having good solid relationships having a strong network and um being able to reach out to individuals people like to work with people that they know or they've worked with before and if you're building solid relationships that's going to make it a lot more seamless when you're able to bring in your own business there's a lot of opportunities to network in accounting and taking advantage of that early on in your career will really serve you well you'll be able to you'll start to see a lot of the same faces over and over again and there will always be a time where either you will need someone or they will need you and it will be very helpful if you already have a solid foundation or some type of relationship with an individual it's always going to serve you if you're and it's not just about using people because you don't want to do that that's tacky but building strong relationships with people will serve you in your career you'll be able to leverage them as resources and vice versa you should be able to be a resource to other individuals it will help you with mentorship all types of stuff so it's really important to start building relationships very early on just keeping in touch with people connecting with them whether it just even be on linkedin just making uh, building a network of people so that's one part of relationship building the other part of relationship building is just being able to work in collaborative settings you don't know where you're going to necessarily necessarily go in your career in accounting. I mean, you might have a very good idea starting out, but you might find later that you're headed in a totally different direction. And now maybe you're in a team setting or you're in a the type of role where collaboration is very um, is very frequent and you're having to work in a lot of teams and you're having to always work with people. It's important for you to have good solid working relationships with other individuals that doesn't mean you have to be friends with them that doesn't mean y'all have to like kiki and hang out on the weekends it just means that you have a good healthy working relationship with people it feels like you um you're able to effectively communicate with them you're comfortable with them they're comfortable with you and y'all are able to get results and do good work with one another so those are the things that are going to be important, just all styles of relationship building, whatever that looks like for you in your work setting, but it is something that will be a very important skill. So if you were coming into accounting thinking that you were just going to isolate yourself, work in your cubicle for the rest of your days and never talk to anyone, that is not a good idea. Every now and again, you need to go to the happy hours. Um, even if you just go to one a year, you need to be getting out there, going to these mixers and whatever else they're having just so that you are building strong relationships. It's so important. So one of the examples that I have for relationship building, fun story. So I used to work for Nordstrom and I worked in the shoe department and there was a, a customer who would come in all the time. I never even was the person helping her. She had her own person that she would always go to, but I always said hello to her and we would always chat and I would compliment her on her cute clothes and nice bags and things. And I just always remembered her when she would come in and she would remember me. And fast forward like three years later, I was going to a NABA event and it was at the company. It was just being housed at the company that she worked in. So she was the one signing everyone in. And I was like, oh my God, I remember you. Um, you used to come in Nordstrom. I used to work there. And she's like, oh, wow. Well, you should consider, what are you doing when you graduate? You should consider working here. And I had already kind of had a, an idea of where I wanted to go with my career. So I didn't end up taking her up on that offer. But I was always, it was such a good relationship. I always would see her and say stuff to her whenever I would see her even if it was like at a NABA event I always made sure I checked in with her and now I work for the same company that she works for like five years later so you never know who you're interacting with it could literally be the person who's giving you your next opportunity so you should really think of that when you're relationship building don't just interact with people who you think can do something for you um treat every interaction with another professional, especially an accounting professional, like there's someone who you will have another opportunity to work with. You just never know how it's gonna go. So um, always be on your P's and Q's. Make sure you are um, always appropriate when you're in elevators. You never know who you're in the elevator with. Just things like that. When I think of relationship building, that's the kind of stuff that comes to mind when I think of relationship building. And I have a ton of situations like that where I'm meeting up again with people later in life in a different spot and I'm always thankful that the, the previous interactions were positive and they're not like it's you because that could be bad and I'm just really grateful that that's not the case.
one of the other skills that you really really need to have as an accountant if you don't have it already if you haven't started this is something you want to really work on developing and that is analytical skills strong analytical skills will be a key component in your accounting work and i think that this can go across a lot of different fields but in accounting there's a even greater emphasis on data analysis and just in general like being able to analyze what you're looking at 90 percent of the work that i do and what most accountants do is looking at spreadsheets um there's these huge data sets in excel and none of it means anything unless you can make it mean something so being able to determine well what does this mean these numbers change they increase by this x percentage that's great if you can do the math anyone can do that though the formula does that what does it mean if you are able to break down what the root of things is um why something changed why it increased or decreased what it's trending towards those are all going to be skills that you will need and you really won't be able to get around it i can't see any part of accounting where you won't be having to analyze data that is that is going to be in almost every role that i can think of and the better you are at it the more useful you will be so the faster you are at being able to analyze data, the more tools that you can leverage to being able to be more efficient at analyzing data, all of that is gonna serve you really well. So definitely don't skip over those electives that they're offering if you're still in school on like data and data analysis. All of those will really be useful skills for you. So definitely look into that. And if you're done with school and you're already working and you're like, yes, I am really struggling with that. There's a ton of free, um, free like courses and things you can take online. I'll see what I can find and then I'll leave it in the description box. But data analysis is huge and you cannot get around it. That is a main skill that you will need. So definitely brush up on that. So my fifth skill is one that most people might not even think of. Um, I don't know if everyone has this who is successful in accounting, but they should. And it is patience you have to have patience and i'm saying this is this is a skill and not a character characteristic because i believe that you can develop patience it is not something that you have to naturally have but you will need patience in accounting especially when you're starting out you will need to be patient with yourself as you learn and get to know yourself as an accountant getting used to being in the professional world getting used to all the different things you'll have to learn i mean there's so much to learn and you don't just get it within a few um, months it doesn't work that way so you'll have to be patient with yourself in that regard you'll also need to be patient with your clients you will need to be patient with your co-workers because they will try you from time to time so patience is a virtue people don't just say it because it sounds good it is really true you have to be patient you will find that maybe one evening you've been working on a file a really large file and you're almost done and right when you're about to save you see that little spinning circle and it just it doesn't ever save and your whole computer crashes and now you have to do it all over again because it didn't save for like the past two hours those are the types of things that happen regularly in accounting so you just have to have patience you just have to go into each day expecting greatness but being willing to accept that that might not be the case um so patience is something that you definitely need to get skilled at one of the ways that i practice patience is i try to tell myself positive things when i want to scream so when i'm really frustrated i just think of um one of the managing partners at the firm that i used to work for she used to say if you're frustrated that means you're learning so i would just be like i'm learning this means i'm learning that would be that's one thing that i do to practice patience another thing is i might say i might take deep breaths or i might just excuse myself for a minute um say well now that i'm working from home i might just go downstairs and just grab myself a drink of coffee or, or tea um just to be clear so just practice patience daily because it is something that you're going to need so you want to build up your your patience muscle and get to a point where you're not ready to scream and throw things because yeah there's going to be a lot of 
things that will test your patience and a lot of people that will test your patience so you just have to get used to that now and just accept it so that is all that i have for you today i hope that you found this video to be helpful if you did be sure to give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already please be sure and subscribe you know it's a pleasure to have you guys and i would love to have more of you let's make the family even bigger we are all out here struggling um if you're not struggling you know you don't have to subscribe but for those of you who are i have more content coming for you so be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed today's video um you know tell a friend to tell a friend so anyway i enjoyed you guys thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video bye